We're going to talk today about um, grooming rhododendrons, both deadheading and pruning. Um, a lot of times when a rhodi bloom finishes, it's really helpful to the bush, especially if you want it to grow well, is to take the old dead flowers off. And you can do that just by snapping off the whole truss, just like that. And what that does is it keeps the rhodi from trying to set any seeds, and it puts the energy into growing. So it's something that if you have a lot of rhododendrons, it can be quite quite a chore, but it's um, especially on young rhodies that you're really trying to establish, it's a really good thing to do. And it's a good thing to wear gloves while you do it because many rhodies, the base of those um, flower trusses are really sticky and you can get your hands pretty sticky in a very short amount of time. So another way to keep rhododendrons compact is by controlling the way they grow. So you can see on this rhododendron, a lot of the shoots that are coming out are singles. Here's a double here. Here's a double here. This is a double. But all of the ones that are singles, um, we can make this rhododendron grow a little less uh, wide and, and tall by taking the singles off at this time of year and by doing that, the new buds that are down in those leaf axles will push again. And then rather than just having one shoot that gets long, you'll have multiple shoots that stay shorter. So rhododendrons come in two kinds. This is um, what's called a lepidote. It has big leaves that are kind of in a whorl, um, big flower trusses. Um, once again, you know, you can come through after it's bloomed and deadhead. But this is the kind of rhodi that is most likely to throw big, long, single shoots and get a little too big. So this is the one that's real important to go through if you want the plant to stay fairly compact and not take, take off not just the flower trusses, but take off those single shoots. So there's a single shoot over here. If I do it this time of year, then it will push again, and again it'll push smaller, um, more compact growth that way. On lepidote rhodies, um, if you haven't been keeping up on the, the um, breaking off the new shoot, shoots, you can come in and prune them. And the way you prune a lepidote rhodi, one of these large leaf rhodies, is if you look along the woody stems down below the growth, you can see little bumps. There's a bump there, there's a bump there, there's one there. These are buds. And if I come in and cut that branch off, right above some of those buds, all of those buds are going to push new shoots um, as this rhodi is growing this spring. And so I can get kind of a reduction in size and get a whole bunch of new shoots back here. And that's a way that you can keep a rhodi that gets really large, kind of cutting it back occasionally. As long as you can find those buds along the stems, you can cut it back. So the other kind of rhododendron is called an elepidote. And an elepidote Rather than having large leaves that are on a whirl around the stem, they tend to have leaves coming out alternately along the stem, and they, they tend to be a little bit shrubbier, their leaves tend to be a little bit smaller. When you want to prune something like this, you don't have to find dormant buds. You don't have to find those little green bumps along the stem, because they've got lots of, of buds along the stem that you can't even see. You can come in and just cut them anywhere, and all of those little buds will push again. And this is really nice if you have a, one of these small leafed elepidote type rhodes, and this includes most of your evergreen azaleas. Um, if you need to cut them back, you can just cut them back to whatever shape or size you want, and they will re push. You can almost hedge these. Um, in fact, you can hedge them, you can turn them into a hedge because you don't have to find those uh, good buds along the stem to cut them back.